As a benthic ecologist, I study everything that lives on the seabed. So primarily uh, marine invertebrate animals, uh, but everything basically that's involved in the ecosystem that is at the seabed. The Southern Ocean is a, a deep water ocean, so we're, we're talking about depths from 3,000 meters down to 5,000 meters. Uh, essentially, if we're looking at the Southern Ocean south of New Zealand in this Ross Sea to New Zealand sector, we don't know very much. Our voyage on the Tangaroa in 2008 as part of the International um, Polar Year was the first that looked at the, um, the northern continental slope of the Ross Sea and the first that looked at the groups of seamounts which are north of the Ross Sea. Uh, so that gives you perhaps an idea of the state we're at. That's the first exploration, so the first surveys of those seamounts and the first exploration of the fauna that live there. We're, we're just beginning. The main tools that we, we use to, to, to sample these areas, are the, the most useful one we're finding is the um, high definition deep water camera systems that we have. So these, these are, if you like, they're dangled on a wire below the ship. It's, it's relatively straightforward technology in that respect, but it gives us a, a, an immediate picture, you can see here on the screen, of the structure of the community on the seabed. So rather than dragging trawls through it and getting a, a lot of broken animals that might be compressed over several kilometers of seabed, we can get a picture here without destroying anything of how those animals interact with each other and exactly how many of them there are. The biodiversity of the Ross Sea continental shelf area is high, most certainly. But if you want to compare it to other regions in the world, that becomes more problematic because in some groups of animals, uh, such as the sea spiders and the bryozoans. We've got much higher diversity in the Antarctic than elsewhere. And in other groups, particularly the, the crustaceans, so um, things like crabs and lobsters, much lower diversity. So it, it's a balance. And the reason why we have that differentiation is that the Antarctic continental shelf fauna have been isolated from the rest of the planet's systems for uh, many millions of years. This is a... Um, this is a sea spider, uh, a pycnogonid, which is, it's one of the groups uh, which is intriguing in the Antarctic system because they're much uh, more diverse in the Antarctic than they are in the rest of the world. There's a much larger proportion of all the species that exist are in the Antarctic than elsewhere. You can also, uh, another interesting point from just looking at this one here, this magnificent thing here, is they grow very large. Uh, and this, is, this has been long been uh, noted in the Antarctic benthic fauna, is that there's a tendency in some groups towards uh, gigantism, to growing much larger than we find them in the rest of the world. I don't know if you can get a close look on this here, but it's basically all legs. There's virtually no body to the thing. So the, 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 the internal organs of the um, animal, they, they actually spread out into the legs here. It's, it's well unlike anything else we, we know about. Uh, here's another example of uh, a magnificent beast. This is, um, this is actually a polychaete worm, so um, something you might find under a, under a rock on a, a tide pool, uh, but much, much larger. There's debate over whether the Antarctic is the reason why these things are larger, or it's just that there are lineages of these animals that um, have evolved in the Antarctic and don't exist anywhere else. One of the most fascinating finds uh, from my perspective from the recent uh, International Polar Year voyage was on one of these seamounts north of the Ross Sea. We found these extraordinary assemblages of sea lilies. Th these are crinoids, stalked crinoids, which, despite the name, is an animal. Uh, it's closely related to things like sea urchins and sea stars, brittle stars, the things that you'll, you'll be familiar with. But perhaps the main difference is it's anchored in one position. It's actually fixed solidly to the seabed, to the rocks. To put them in context, the only place that we've actually seen these before is in the fossil record. We've never seen anything like this before uh, on the seabed alive. We have fossil records from uh, all over the world where these things were extremely common and this kind of assemblage with sea lilies, brachiopods and very little else, it was the norm. Uh, and now we've found this on a, an isolated seamount, a small part of an isolated seamount north of the Ross Sea. It's the kind of um, scientific find that uh, sparks our interest, makes us start to generate the questions that make us go out and search for more answers.